My name is Rebecca Lipscomb. I've been a member of Happier Parenting for Happier Children Malta since 2020. In 2017, I got into a relationship with a man who had children from a previous relationship. In the beginning, it was great. Um, the children seemed to accept the fact that their father had a new partner. They seemed happy. However, over time, we started seeing changes in the children. This was when I... They became sad. I'd spoken to many different professionals and I seem to reach a brick wall for two reasons. One, they're not my children. And two, there seem to be no acknowledgement out there officially for emotional abuse. One, in 2020, I found an article. In this article, there was a single line that said, happier parenting for happier children. I became inquisitive. I got in contact with the NGO to see if they could help us in some way. Through the NGO, I was given a lot of information and that's when I learned about parental alienation. Everything became very clear. The NGO, they gave me lots of information from videos to articles all about parental alienation and things started to click. We weren't alone. There are people aren't out there that understand what's going on with, the, with these children. And I was reading through these information and these studies and watching the videos that I realized that I too had been a victim. I always say in my life I have two dads. I have my biological father and I have my dad, the man that brought me up from the age of seven. This man I thought adored me, I thought he loved me. I thought he wanted to be my dad. That's when I realised, in fact, what he had done was that he had kept me away from my biological family. It was just small things at first. It was like, you don't need them. You've got me. They don't bother with you, so why should you bother with them? Then over time, I changed my name because I wanted to be like my family. I wanted to be like my mom and my dad. And I adopted the name Rebecca Purvis. And that's what I've known myself as for a very long time. I always assumed that my dad had just abandoned me and I didn't want to give him another chance. I, I was done. I'd been hurt too many times and I wanted to stay loyal to, to my stepdad. I need to be, he's part of my family. I, and discussing with my partner, he said, look what I'm going through. Don't you think I would deserve a second chance? Let's go meet him. And so we met him. In the beginning, I was there physically, but I wasn't there mentally. I, I wouldn't let him come close. I would refuse to call him dad. I'd call him by his name. But learning the fact that 
I was brainwashed. Slowly, slowly, I'm accepting yes, he is my dad. And the first time I called him dad after 30 odd years, he cried. Being a victim of alienation, I've lost a sense of identity. I still don't really know who I am. Am I Rebecca Lipscomb? Because it's on my birth certificate. That's the surname of my father. Or am I Rebecca Purvis? The girl that was raised by who I thought was a loving dad, which turned out to be an abuser, because that's what he did. So I feel a bit lost of, of who I really am. I have abandonment issues. I always assume that men are just gonna leave me. I'm always trying to please, trying to prove to be good, so overcompensated. I always blame myself for, for the breakups of my mum. Because if I was a good girl, why would they leave, you know? The, the NGO also helped me get in contact with my sister again. Because I don't think I would have pieced all the pieces together if my dad hadn't have alienated me from my sister. My sister didn't speak to me for two years. And I was so close with my sister. She was my, my best friend. And but the, the thing is, I, I wouldn't have known, I wouldn't have known that he had alienated me if he hadn't have done the same thing what he did to me, he did to my little sister. When they separated, he alienated my family. He alienated my sister from, from my family. And that's how everything clicked. That's how I know. Mm. The NGO is going to put me in contact with a professional that has dealt with um, adults that have experienced past parental alienation. So <laughs> I'm really thankful for that. Um, I hope to see change in the justice system, which I feel that the, the NGO is advocating a lot for. I really hope that youth workers will work with young people in Malta and teach them the difference between parental alienation and abandonment. Maybe there are young people out there that think they have been abandoned and really they are a victim of parental alienation. Finally, I would like to give hope to parents that have children that have been alienated. There's always hope. It took me 37 years to tell my dad I love him. So don't lose hope. <laughs>